the time, uh, uh, Steve Fredrickson was his name. He had a, he, he had no business, but he'd take the family car, one of these old 27, 28 cars with big wheels, and we all went roaring out in the desert, and uh, Calvin was in front, and two or three of us in the back, and uh, Steve, uh, he stopped, and for some reason or the other, he backed, he, Cal got out, and uh, Steve backed up on the front, right front wheel run over Calvin, and it uh, broke his collarbone. We didn't know it at the time, but uh, I remember when we got home, uh, Mom and Dad said, now, how did that happen? I remember we said, well, we were just chasing wild burrows. <laughs> yeah, then Cal had to go. Didn't, didn't want anybody to know about your ride. Huh? Right, right. Yeah. George Whitney, our cousin, we ran, uh, Bert and I and George had run around. Uh, Cal, I guess, too, yeah. We'd run around together, and one, there was an old tractor sitting in a uh, big yard, and the, uh, by the way, that real high chain link fence was still there. Big high chain link fence, about eight, ten feet high, but the gate was open. So we went in there and looked at that tractor, and uh, we, I don't know why, we screwed the cap off the gasoline tank sitting right up on top, to, I guess, to see how much gas was in. And we all crowded in there, to kind of shoving each other, see see who could see the height of the gasoline first, and uh, uh, we couldn't see it too dark, and I don't know why George Whitney struck a match, you know, so he could see, and whoop, boy, oh, he got burned pretty bad, the rest of us, because he was the biggest, and he put, kind of pushed us all away, and he got the, got a real bad scar on his arm, and his uh, face all scarred up, and I remember, uh, we, he, we, he ran home, you know, a fire, and we all followed him, and he ran in the house, and and Miss grabbed him, and of course threw a, black, a quilt around him, and uh, she took his, I think they were bib overalls, she took them off and threw them out in the front yard, and they landed on a peach tree, and they were sitting in the peach tree smoking, and I remember saying, is that all there is left to George? <laughs> George Whitney and, I, Whitney and I were at school, and we had a rope, oh, the ropes were that big around rope swing, and we were just pumping up high as could be, and the bell would rung, and uh, we wanted to get a little higher, and uh, one of the ropes broke, and boy, we went sailing out through space there. I broke my arm, and he ripped the, the, uh, the burn, caused a piece of flesh to come down here that, uh, just a web, and it ripped that open. Another trip to Las Vegas, the doctor. <laughs> Another thing I remember is, uh, on a Saturday, we'd go in quite often in the Palace Theater or the El Portel and take the afternoon matinee. And I remember we had a Frankenstein movie. Boy, that was, that was really something. But <laughs> about a week after, every time it was my turn after dark to go out and get a bucket of water, I went out there and went on the board. I looked around and I just knew Frankenstein was in those rushes. I went tearing back the house, spilling half my water. <laughs> Yeah, well, you know, I was really, really, my imagination really uh, let me believe he was in there ready to get me. Well, that cellar that we had where we stored our fruit and stuff, yeah. every time I had to go down and get a jar of fruit or something, yeah. I just knew there was a bear behind the door. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. We had a great big old barrel of salt pickles down there, a big uh, stone vat, and uh, I'd reach, when they get low, I'd reach way down in the salt brine and come up to my elbow, and I, I don't know why I didn't bother to think about rinsing. I'd run around with the salt caked on my arm there. <laughs> I don't know why I didn't think of washing it off, but yeah, those were the days, all right.